right here. Yep. Yeah. So we have what's called drop radius. Whatever your depth is, the object can move that equal distance. Yep. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Acre Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now here behind me is Lake Hickory, hence the name, Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. And this is where I earn a living. Not only do I own a dive shop here on the lake, I actually earn a living doing commercialized diving, search and recovery and salvage work. And we do a ton of search and recovery work here, day in, day out, all throughout the week. And in our videos, we talk about drop radius. And a lot of you guys have been curious about what is drop radius? Can you kind of explain how it works and how it affects a search and recovery diver? And that's exactly what we're gonna do in today's video. We're gonna be talking about drop radius, how it affects us as search and recovery divers, and how we can kind of plan for that drop radius when we're trying to determine which search pattern is gonna be the best to go out and look for an item that's been lost. So what is drop radius? Well, in short, drop radius simply states that an object that is sunk in the water column can move up to the equal amount of distance as its depth. So let's say I'm working in 10 foot of water and an object goes down in that 10 foot of water. I'm gonna have a 10 foot radius search from that drop line or that down line that that item could possibly be in. And there's a lot of external forces that can cause this, whether it's the current, the uh, shape of the object, or the object's just natural buoyancy characteristics. A lot of that can determine how far that item is going to move in the water column. Now, this is not always consistent. It can go outside of that radius and it can still drop straight down. But we can use drop radius to our advantage to help us determine what search pattern is gonna be the best to look for an item underwater. So I wanna show you a great example this was a search and recovery dive I did just the other day, and I want to show you just how far an object can move, a heavy object, an object just like I'm recording with here, a cell phone. And I want to show you just how quickly an object can move underwater and how far it can move as well. So if we look at the scene here in front of us, guys, we are actually going to look for a cell phone. And there at the front of our bow, uh, you'll notice that little feed pan right there. That feed pan is what this lady uses to feed her ducks. And as she was leaned over feeding her ducks, putting uh, food in the feed pan there, she dropped her cell phone. Now that feed pan is going to be very important for us because this is going to be our reference point. You'll see that there is a fishing buoy uh, just directly in front of it. That's going to be my reference line that I go down and I start my search at. Now just like I explained earlier, we are going to see a uh, drop radius in this video and I'm going to show you just how far an object can move based off the depth as well. Now as I descend down the line here, we know that I'm going straight down exactly where she dropped the phone and the average person or the average diver would think, hey, cell phone's going to be right there at the bottom of the line because that's what we always hope for. But as you can see, there is no cell phone. So understanding how drop radius works and understanding how you can conduct a search very methodically and efficiently um, is going to make your searches a lot more successful. So what I've decided to do here is I am going to do a radius search or a circle search around the area equal to the depth itself. Now, I'm in roughly about 15 to 20 foot of water here, so I know that my search radius is gonna be anywhere between 15 and 20 feet. Now, to do a methodical search here, I'm gonna use several different techniques to help me out. One, I can use the shadows from above, so I know if I'm up underneath the dock, it's gonna be a little bit darker than what it is if I'm outside of that dock area. And I can also use the debris that's lining the bottom of the lake here to let me know if I've already searched an area. Now, unfortunately, since I am using a uh, little bass buoy or a fishing buoy there, I'm not really gonna be able to do a radius search using a line, which means I'm not gonna be able to connect another line to it and then do a methodical search uh, just by simply swimming in a circle because it would just simply pull that line along with me and it's not gonna be a good 
solid surface to connect a reel or a uh, some type of line to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, four semi-circle searches. I'm just going to kind of sweep uh, on the upper side of it and then the lower side of it and I'll do the right side of the line and then sweep on the upper and lower side of the left side of the line as well. I can also use the slope and bottom to kind of let me know where I've been and I can do a very good methodical search here. Now I'm going to zoom forward slightly for you here and I'm going to go ahead and show you just how far away it was when I actually found the phone because to be honest it was nowhere near where she actually dropped it at. So as I continue to search here you'll see very quickly I come across the cell phone but once I locate it I'm gonna come straight up and we are gonna look at the distance of how far away I am from where I made my descent or where from that drop line or reference line was so here you can see I located the cell phone and I'm just gonna make a direct descent straight up to the surface like I said I'm about 15 foot of water here and I'm just gonna come straight up to the surface and I'll try to pause the video for you because I want you to see the distance from where I'm at from where where I actually started my search, and you can actually measure it out. So here we can see the distance is probably about that full 15 foot uh, mark. We've got two uh, sea -Doo, um docks there, the one she's standing on, they're approximately four and a half to five foot wide, and then we've got the other, say, four foot section of dock. Uh, where that feed uh, pan is and where our buoy is so you can see I'm, I'm pushing that 15 foot mark which holds true to drop radius the distance between where an object goes down and where an object can be located uh, or your search radius will always be equal to its depth now like I said if we had a really strong current and based off the buoyancy characteristics of an object it can go further than that but as you can see very clearly, where she dropped her phone at is not where we actually located her phone. Right here. Yep. <laughs> So we have what's called drop radius. Whatever your depth is, the object can move that equal distance. Yep. So there you go guys, that's drop radius. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it very educational. If you are a search and recovery diver, I hope this is going to help you in the future going out and doing search and recoveries. And hopefully it'll make you a lot more successful as a search and recovery diver as well. Because I really enjoyed making this video. I love the science behind scuba diving. If you wanna see more videos like this, drop me a comment down below, something that you may wanna see, and I'll try to get you a video made as well. But guys, if you did like the video, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.